capital is important, but you have to have capital for your people. It's as important. well. You have to have capital for your people. Um, and most people don't do that. They want to just go out the gate, go out the gate, then they worry about paying stuff later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To so they want to money. then yeah. pay staff off of the money that starts coming in. That starts in. coming in instead of having three, four months. Um, so I was quite sick a lot as a child. I would stay home and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, you have DSTV. So there was BBC, you know, we'd watch that channel. And yeah, so yeah. Jamie Oliver would pull up. And uh, I, I was actually sad. Yeah, I remember but, that. Yeah. And so I was sort of caught by that name, the naked chef, because I was like, wait, but he's not naked, you know, because obviously you're a light and you're like, but wait, the guy naked, like, let me see what this is about. And I just saw the way he so easily put food together and just, you know, you could see the passion that he had for it. And I think then that for me was like, okay, I can actually do this because he seemed like a regular Joe. You know, when people kind of talk about, let's say, for example, if you were to compare Jay-Z and Kanye West, people yeah. are like, okay, I can compare more to Kanye because, I mean, I relate more to Kanye because... He's a man of the people, you know, yeah. he's like a regular nigga, he seems you know like what I mean? a regular mean? person. He's like a regular Despite dude. Despite the fact that he's like extremely talented. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Whereas with Jay, you're like, yo, this nigga might shoot me or just yeah, like, there's like a rough age. Age, you know, there's exactly. A rough, there's a really rough yeah. age too. Yeah, man. So, um, so yeah, so with, with Jamie Oliver, I definitely felt that relation with him in comparison to more of the serious chefs. So it, yeah. it helped open that up for me. Yeah, that's yeah. quite interesting. So this is like a young you uh, watching these shows, just absorbing all this knowledge. Mm-hmm. Were you also like cooking in these phases where you're already cooking or that wasn't? That wasn't quite where I was. Um, yeah. So I definitely watch my mom a lot and I eat food. So, you know, I, I, I think definitely in terms of taste, that's where I would say I have you a little more of an advantage. So yeah, exactly. It's building up that palate, building up that palate. And I really sort of started cooking around the age of 16 because I think that's also when my mom was more comfortable for me to be in the kitchen safely, you know, yeah. without messing at you. Yeah, yeah. yeah without hurting yeah. yourself or exactly. no. in that space. Yeah, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so that's when I'd say it started up. Yeah. Fair enough. And so at 16, you start cooking. This is at home or you were taking classes at school as well? What was the dynamic? This, was, this was at home because... Um, I was in England at the time now, and this was at high school, but we didn't have any home economic classes or anything like that, yeah. so it was just mostly at home. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear that, I hear that. That's fascinating because, so I, I asked that because I know that your experience of, of, of tertiary education, uh, at least uh, some of the stuff that was on your LinkedIn was that uh, your let's call it professional training, because yeah. I, I would like to think that the stuff you're doing at home also counts as training because you're really putting hours in for right sure, for sure. but um <coughs> the professional training at least uh that starts in in, in france yeah that starts and in france, yeah. you took uh, two diplomas there if i'm not mistaken it's one in culinary arts and yeah. another in chef training is that it um the other one was in a pastry for pastry yes. okay yeah okay so okay pastry. fair enough yeah. fair enough yeah. fair enough yeah. and so you've been exposed to, to England, Jamie Oliver, your mom's kitchen, and then now you're in France, right? Um, what did you take away from that experience that was almost distinct from what you had been learning before about food? I think definitely the discipline, um, the discipline aspect and the respect aspect that, look, first of all, you're cooking food for people, man, like straight up, like don't fuck around, like come through mm-hmm. and just take your job seriously, show up on time, be clean, Try to learn from the people who are teaching you, you know, they may lose their shit on you because yeah. it's very, very different from like being at home and then like coming there. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like they lost it on me. But then I realized it because I was like, yeah, you know, like, because I, I feel terrible when I go somewhere and I spend 10 bucks and it wasn't great. You yeah. Know what I mean? And yeah, yeah, so yeah, the so quality was, of the exactly, food is terrible. Exactly. And thinking, Man. So it was like that feeling, you know. And so it was also quite nice because with them, they didn't fuck with my English, you know what I'm saying? Because I went to a school where we spoke predominantly English, with yeah. the school in France. Yeah. And then once I went for my internship, which I was on for about six months, there was absolutely no English spoken there. And they were not fucking with me. I thought they'd be cool and be like, yeah, no, we'll help you, I'll help you. They were like, nah, man. And it was great because it helped me to also understand, you know, other people's cultures and respecting other people's cultures. Yeah. Know? So, so I definitely, yeah. Yeah. That, that, was, that was a great takeaway for me, you know, that discipline, respect, and I guess that, yeah. just that assimilation. Exactly, man. Exactly. I hear that, man. And so 
um, during that like six month internship that you just mentioned, that's quite interesting because uh, how were you like communicating like in the kitchens? <laughs> so basically, I had to just like get home and I'd study French. I'd just get home, watch movies, watch anything I could, listen to French music. And I was already quite good with French at school. Yeah. So, you know, because I, I, I loved it. It was it's a beautiful language, but it's very different when you now go somewhere completely different. Yeah. So, yeah. so, yeah, I just studied and studied and studied and studied. And just, you know, I guess, I, honestly, I also have, had, have God to thank for that, man, because, you know, I would pray and just be like, God, help me, because yeah. I, I need to get <laughs> my shit together. Yeah, that sounds tough. That sounds tough. Yeah. That yeah, sounds but, tough. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, post. Um, Post France, uh, you then went to, to Italy, and I think this was, was this was still like studying, isn't it? Yeah, uh, yeah, still studying. So in Italy, what were you what were you studying, and, and what was the thinking behind the choice of of, of, of uh, going to learn there as well? So Italy was um, was lots of baking, regional Italian cuisine fresh pastas, um, Italian pastries, gelato, stuff like that. Because yeah. it, Italian food is not very diverse in that capacity. They're very traditional. Um, of course, you get the modern stuff, but I was learning more of the traditional stuff. Yeah. Um, and that was the base of what I was learning. And um, I actually had wanted to go to Japan at first. So it was supposed Ooh, to be France, then, as well. then Japan. Because yeah. I was like, yeah, I'm about that life. Um, <laughs> you know, be on my Kanye West again. Because Kanye went to Japan for a bit. I was like... I'm a Why, not? Why the fuck not? Yeah. And so we, we tried to get into a school there and we just struggled. We, we can communicate with the people as well, you Ooh, know, maybe yeah, yeah. organized or whatever. Uh, and then I found the school in Italy. My mom was like, Why not try Italy? I was like, You know what? Fuck it. Why not? I was a bit reluctant. But then, you know, we found the school in Florence. It was um, really great, very diverse. Uh, the Florence University of the Arts, that's like the whole, the whole university itself. Yeah. But I went to a, a Peaches, which was the culinary school, and I also went to Gonzo, which was the which was the the restaurant school, and then I went to Fedora, which was our pastry school. So those were my yeah. schools in, in yeah, Italy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 so that's interesting because it sounds like you were doing like a, a number of things there, right? Um, how was that experience different from the one that you had just like uh, gotten in France? I'd say it was much nicer because I was confident in myself. So, you know, I, I actually saw that, look, I can actually work, like I can actually make it as a chef. Yeah. Whereas in France, I was like, yeah, okay, like shit, like maybe I won't make it, you know what I mean? And then once I got there, it was great because um, I was learning all these different things. But it was nice because I felt like I knew what I was doing, even when I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. So it just, it all blended and molded in together nicely, you know? Yeah. 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 I hear that. I hear that. It, 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 it's actually quite odd that um, what you say there is, is, is quite true that when you do things, right, it also gives you like the confidence and the power to just like actually be calm and, and, and follow through with, with, with other things, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and so in Italy, like language wasn't a big issue or? So it wasn't too much of a big issue. One, because I didn't go on an internship, but also once again, I went to an international school. So all the students that I was with were all- Mostly all, English speaking. Mostly English speaking. Yeah. And same thing with my classes, they were all English. So it was pretty G. I did yeah. learn a bit of Italian. Um, French is my second language. So at least I got to learn that. But Italian, I, I can't quite speak it. But yeah. It wasn't an issue. Yeah, yeah. 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 fair enough. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's that's quite quite interesting and so now we come back to to zim right yeah. uh within the context of zim you've you've taken uh, quite a number of roles um i, I know you've worked as a, a a sous chef um where was this i, I didn't take that down for some reason uh, so i worked in two places as a sous chef uh, the first place was uh, a homemade kitchen in a garden which was my mother's restaurant she she does traditional food so she had a restaurant yeah. and uh when I initially came on, I came on as sous chef, so I was there, and uh, that was that was quite fun. And then I was also in Kariba at Changa Safari Camp. I started out there as a sous chef. Yeah, yeah. And then you transitioned into like head chef. Yeah, head on, right? yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay, exactly. fair enough. So, um, when someone is in that role of sous chef, yeah, 
what does that mean? What are like your responsibilities? What do you do in the kitchen in, in that particular role? So essentially you're running the kitchen while the chef tends to the other duties that they have to things like procurement, all the sort of, you know, admin stuff. That's yeah. really what the main chef does and he creates the recipes and whatever, but we're running the floor. We're making sure that the main courses are good to go, the you know, the starters, the desserts, whatever have you, where we're just checking and making sure everything is cool. We're yeah. number two. We're number one, but number two. Yeah, 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 I hear that. I hear, like you're on the ground exactly. making sure everything is coming exactly. together. Exactly. And so the head chef, ooh, that's, that's interesting. And so, like, which is more taxing, Sue or head chef? I definitely say Sue. Yeah. I'd say so because you, you have that title of respect straight. Like you don't have that title of respect as a sous chef. People are like, nah, fuck this nigga. Like yeah. this is number two. Like he ain't the main <laughs> chef. I ain't gonna listen to him. So so it's a bit more of a guard when you're now trying to get your team together. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Of course, you have certain situations where you're fortunate enough to have a team that just wants to work, but sometimes you don't. And it's like, whoa, okay, fuck, bro. Like how do I get these people to, to, to deliver? Exactly. How do I do that? So. So I'd say it's definitely a harder, harder job for sure. Because yeah, then even yeah. with the chef himself, he'll be like, why are people not listening to you? Like, so you're getting it from both ends. Ah, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. That's quite interesting. That's actually quite interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I think for you then I would ask, uh, which of these two did you, did you feel was, uh, was, was more engaging when you're, because I know you've been in both roles, right? Yeah. Uh, you've been uh, the guy uh, on the floor and yeah. then you've been the guy behind the scenes doing the admin and, and, and which one is, is more exciting to you and, and what do you feel these roles like demand from you? I definitely say the, the head chef is, is more exciting because you know what, yeah. you've just got everything in your, your control, you know what I'm saying? You, have the power to teach somebody so even if they are reluctant with with the sous chef as the head chef you know they won't be reluctant with you because they also kind of you know are like oh shit this is my this job is to a certain degree yeah. And yeah and so i have to respect this guy and so i definitely say I, I enjoy i enjoy that role of head, head chef because also in terms of creative um you know control you get to do whatever you want i can create whatever i want i can schedule this like this i can do this like also oh, you get to decide like the recipes yeah, or at yeah. least the, the menu yeah so so i'm essentially creating everything myself um, even the way that my team runs like i know that i can be like okay work like this and work like that and do this and do that in this capacity yeah. cleaning chopping all that kind of stuff because as a sous chef you can be like okay clean this and make it clean and be like oh Chef, the head chef doesn't do it like that. Like fuck you, bro. And it's yeah. Like, nah, man. Like you know. So so it's nice because then it becomes your symphony. You know what I'm saying? I think for yeah. me, when I was at Chung, it was quite nice. Now when I became the head chef, because I actually saw that vision of that I had of myself back at eight, sort of coming into that manifestation. Yeah. You're like okay, well, it's very possible. Yeah. 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 And so that that's actually quite interesting because. Um, it's, it, 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 it sounds to me like you don't uh, mind, mind the pressure because what I'm getting from it is that everything lives and dies by the head chef, right? Like yeah. you might have less taxing work, but yeah. the outcomes uh, kind of fall on you. You're like the lead, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> That's, that's exactly what it is, dude. I'm addicted to the pressure. <laughs> it's a problem, bro. It's such a problem. So, so even when I'm working, like I'm just always going hard, going hard, going hard. Yeah. I like to put myself in difficult situations for no reason. That way I can come up, you know what I'm saying? So the harder the work, you just keep... Yeah, yeah. You, you keep growing as well, isn't it? Yeah, that's, yeah. yeah, yeah that's, that's quite interesting. And then another interesting experience that you've had... Um, was uh, La Casa, you were the executive chef uh, of that restaurant, right? And so, um, there are actually a number of interesting things that we'll talk about uh, regarding that experience. Uh, one, it was like a, a Western cuisine restaurant, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, it was, so it was a West African yeah, West traditional African, West African, not Western. <laughs> slash Western, essentially. So okay. that was the whole concept we were yeah. trying to go with, creating it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and so my, my question there is, uh, because I know, um, judging from the stuff you've done with Black and White, uh, 
where you actually do different uh, traditional cuisines or different like themes essentially. Yeah. yeah. Um, like, how fast or how how quick is it for you to actually like learn uh, a certain cuisine? Because like, if we're talking about West African, yeah. Uh, that has uh, totally different demands from, from French food, right? Yeah, I would yeah. assume uh, different demands from Italian food, uh, different demands from Zimbabwean food. Yeah. Um, as a chef, like, what is that process like when, it's, when it comes to like learning new cuisine and then delivering it to people? Uh, what are some of the nuances? Um, I'd say it's definitely something fun. I, I definitely enjoy it and I, I adapt to it quite quickly. That was the great thing about going to, to Italy, actually, is because yeah. with the way that they taught us, it, the base of it was learn how to cook this and learn it, cook it perfectly. Like, cook this perfectly, you'll be fine. Cook that perfectly, you'll be fine. Cook that perfectly, you'll be fine. So essentially, when you get a brand new ingredient, or at least with me, I have some sort of idea on how to work with it. So if yeah. I wanted to create the menu and make something amazing, I think that I, I don't really have so much of an issue with it. I do like to practice though. I do spend a good week practicing and making sure that I get stuff as great as I can. We work on the menu for an entire month yeah. so that it, it's just something really productive and great for people. Yeah. But you know, of course it does come with its challenges, but I'd say that I don't really face much difficulty. Maybe the difficulty would be in finding certain ingredients and tools to use in order to, to make to actually happen. deliver that experience. Exactly, yeah. exactly. That's yeah, where, where, that. the, where the struggle more is. Yeah. I hear that. Yeah, I hear that. And I, and I imagine in a, in a place like, like Zim, um, that would be uh, all the more taxing. And that actually goes into like my, my, my follow-up question regarding uh, La Casa, right? Yeah. Because La Casa was a restaurant experience. Yeah. Uh, we talked about uh, the, the safari. That yeah. was another... Would you call that a restaurant experience as well? Uh, I wouldn't. I would call it more a hotel. Hotel experience, experience yeah. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I think that feeds perfectly into the question I wanted to ask okay. you know, regarding La Casa. Uh, mm. What are some of the biggest challenges you face in the restaurant industry in Zim from, from that experience, your time there? I definitely say staff, for sure, like the handling of staff as well as um, marketing, I'd say. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's very important that you have certain plans on the ground when you're starting a business. And, um, you know, if you don't get the right stuff, if you don't take care of your yeah. stuff, you, that's a big problem straight away. So I'd it, say that... It shows in the food. It shows in the food, <laughs> it shows in the service, it shows in everything, you know, it, it touches all the different yeah. areas. So I definitely say that, yeah, no, like staff for me was a big issue because then you have certain people also trying to be this person, the boss, that boss, that boss, that boss, and then it, the hierarchy crumbles and it's fucked. Oh, so like within the, the dynamic of the kitchen, yeah. people not understanding their role. Yeah, exactly. People not understanding their role, people not wanting to take direction from you per se. Um, same thing with, with the whole, because I was also the general manager there as well. Yeah. So I had the other staff to handle as well, barmen, you know all these people as well so you want to make sure that everything's okay so yeah, yeah it's a yeah, bit of a sounds, it's, it's, it's a like bit a, of a vessel a task yeah it sounds it's like a bit a of task. a task yeah and then when yeah. you when you speak of uh staffing uh yeah. is it a is it a lack of talent uh, within the industry or um, i wouldn't say that it's a lack of talent Zimbabwe is full of lots of very talented people and very passionate people but yeah. one thing that i always say to people when i get into business with them or if I'm consulting on with them on a restaurant or something, I'm like, look, your staff are the most important people. Pay the niggas. Yeah. Pay people, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like seriously, people yeah, deserve a proper, proper minimum wage, not not the most basic one that we have here, because people can't live on that. Yeah. If you want your business to strive, especially the a restaurant business. You gotta pay people because it's taxing hours. People are on their feet. They're this, yeah, and that. yeah. So they're gonna lose that momentum, and they're gonna be like, "Fuck, bro." You know, what is it worth if what I'm not even worth? getting paid? Exactly. And dude. It's, it's interesting that you say that because yeah. the the other chef I, I, I brought on, uh, Tondurai TJ, he, yeah, he TJ. said yeah. the exact same thing, which was uh, when he was working in kitchens, he was spending these like. Um, 
godly amount of hours in these spaces, right? Uh, sometimes 12 hours, right? Yeah, yeah. 12 hour shift, if not more, sometimes 16 hour shift. Mm. And he came to a point where it was like, what is this worth? Because one, I can't even afford basic things. I can't afford a car. I can't afford to move out. Yeah. I can't, I, like, you're struggling to get just transport from a grueling six after like a grueling 16 hour shift yeah you're struggling to get transport to go back home yeah and it's like yeah so okay i hear you i hear you when you talk about paying people their worth what do you think and maybe this is a question you might not be able to answer but what do you think is is the issue is the money not there or the money is there but the people with the money don't necessarily allocate it fairly. And what do you think is the issue? I think it's both. You know, some people start start businesses and they're like, yeah, I'm going to do this. And then they flex and they buy a bunch of shit. Yeah, they buy a Benz. Like, <laughs> well, Benz or even... Second before, month. Exactly, man. Or like, even <laughs> like, oh, this is like even before it started. Like, they'll, they'll, they'll literally create, because this is like before the restaurant opens. Yeah. So we're saying... Do you have the capital for this shit? And then they spend all the money making the place look absolutely beautiful, buying yeah. expensive TVs, chairs, you know, like all this stuff. Ooh, yeah, furniture, and it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. All this furniture and stuff. And it's like, dude, capital is important, but you have to have capital for your people. It's As important. well. You have to have capital for your people. Um, and most people don't do that. They want to just go out the gate, go out the gate. Then they worry about paying stuff later. Yeah, yeah, so they want to money. then yeah. pay staff off of the money that starts coming in. That starts in. coming in instead of having three, four months, you know, wages yeah. in advance, which makes life way easier, yeah. you know what which I'm saying? Yeah. You know, yeah. so yeah. instead of buying that, I don't know, that, that ridiculous item for the space, you know, give it, give it to your people. But at the same time, like you're saying, it's people having money and not wanting to give it out. So, it's, so it, they bounce off of each other. Right? Yeah. And like, I want it to look good. I don't really care about the staff. And then yeah. that's when you find that people are now staffing afterwards as well, instead of staffing before. So when they're now staffing, they're getting people who they're like, oh, fuck, we don't have enough money. Let's just pay this nigga. Like, yeah, like, like this is the person we can get. You know what I'm this is the person yeah. we can get. And then we'll get somebody later And that on. leads into the And service. it never happens. <laughs> And it never happens. Yeah, later on, it never yeah. comes because no, no, it never comes because the, you're the, trying to just keep the up, business keep up. is bad. Business is failing. Shit's, shit's just tanking, dog. It's just tanking. Oh yeah, that's yeah, man. That that sounds that sounds tough. <laughs> that sounds tough. Yeah. <laughs> and so let's let's go into what becomes uh, your baby, as you referred it to, right? Uh, the black and white food company. Yeah. Um, yeah. What I would say my perception of the black and white food company is, and this is just informed by uh, your Instagram, you have to like take me with you, mm. is that you guys are doing what you call an invitation chef's table. Yeah. Uh, this is in Harare. Uh, maybe take me through this concept and um, first of all, you know, what do you mean when uh, you call it an invitation chef's table? Okay. So... It's an invitational. Yeah. The reason why we, we call it an invitational is because we invite people to come through. Now, we only have 30 people come through per, per month. Yeah. We started doing it bi-monthly. We're still sort of just trying to set that in stone. Yeah. But we only have 30 people come through. It's not where you can come to a restaurant and we have like 60, 70, 80 to 100 niggas, you know yeah. what I'm saying, coming through. And so also with the type of food that we're cooking, we're cooking anywhere from seven to 10 courses at a time. So, you know, if we're trying to do that for multiple people, you know, it ends That's up becoming tough. a bit too yeah. much. It's not yeah. really tough per se. I can definitely do it. But it's also about just ensuring that the quality is as great as it can be. Also creating that space of intimacy for people. So the reason why we're inviting people is because we want everybody in Zim to actually get a chance to come through and ch check out what it is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I'd love to go to something like that. But I know that with 30 people and if we're doing it twice a month, I might not get a chance to go back again. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's what like, we want to invite you, we want you to come through. And it's not like we're like picking, you know, the most like elite niggas or whatever. We're yeah, not yeah, doing yeah. that, bro. Yeah. We're picking yeah. everybody <laughs> because we're about it. You know, that's the whole mantra of the company the black and white you know that everybody's equal everybody's everything no matter how broke you are how ma no matter how rich you are yeah. you all deserve great food 
Yeah, you know, I hear that. I hear that. And so my, my interest would then be, you know, like how do the economics around that work? Is this uh, a business type thing or for you it's a marketing yourself as a chef type thing? How, how do the, the economics work? For me, well, it's both, dude. You know, uh, it's a business at the end of the day. We've got to make money, you know what okay. I'm saying? So, yeah. so I'm all about... I'm all about the business aspect of it, but I'm also about marketing myself because, you know, of course, attention is good for the, for that. And like I'm saying, I want to, I want as many people to eat my good food as possible. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 I hear that. I hear that. And so one of the things uh, when we met like prior to this, you were telling me is that um, the, the experience is like a themed experience. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe talk me through that, like some of the examples of the themes uh, and, you know, the thinking behind, like, what theme comes now, what theme comes next, how do we keep that, like, rotation and, and interest going? So, we had actually first started out as just doing fusion food. We were doing a lot of fusion food. Yeah. Um, because I, that's basically sort of my main style of cooking. Of course, I love my Italian, I love my French, I love my whatever. But I wanted to find a way to bring them all together and make them into something yeah. dope. So we had started out doing that. And then um, I just realized all the different cultures and the different people that we had coming. And I was just trying to say that, look, I'd be kind of an asshole. I'd be selfish if I wanted to just make this simple you know, no, not simple, but just this fusion food for people only yeah. when I can be embracing other cultures because I love Italian food and I remember how I felt when I was there. I was a different person when I was in France. I was a different person with the food yeah. when I came home to make traditional food. I was a different in a person. different different person, you know, in different space. So that's when I was like, okay, well, let's, let's build it on that and let's grow from there. Especially because we also want to appeal from, to other people. I've got French friends, I've got Indian friends who I want to try my food and be like, yeah. okay, well, Am I doing this right? You know, so so really, where it comes from, you know, with us choosing the different the different themes and stuff, that's just literally. I literally just spin a globe, and I'm like, this is where we're going. Like that's where it's nothing fancy, but you know, we still we still completely respect it. Yeah. And, you know, have yeah. it. we're about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so with the development now, it's 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 it's, it's cool because we're doing a theme for a country, and we're also doing a holiday. So, oh, so that's how it's by monthly. Exactly. One so is why a country, country. Exactly. one is a, an event holiday. Exactly, exactly. Like this, this month, just last week, we did Valentine's Day. And then, yeah, yeah no, with this next table, we're going to do, we're going to do Chilean food. You know what I mean? Ooh, so, that's, so it's, that's it's, great. Yeah, so, that's so great. That's just great. so that we also just keep it fresh because, you know, unfortunately, everywhere that we're going, you know, where you go and you eat food, I'm not trying to dog on anyone but yeah. the food is very repetitive yeah it's very sort of the same stuff so you know just for me leg. exactly you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. dude so so we want to keep it fun in that aspect so that people also feel like look we're getting a bang for our buck you know yeah because that once again people are coming to pay for our shit dude come they need. around with people's money yeah quite true quite yeah, yeah. quite a firm believer in that and 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 then um another thing that intrigues me as well is um seven courses uh yeah. is there like a thinking to that or is that something that, that chefs just do like how does that work uh, i ask this because a hey, novice in this world and and Absolutely. so what does like is is seven to accommodate like the fusion elements you spoke of or yeah. it's seven within like yeah let's use uh chilean as a as an example it's seven courses all within uh Chilean style food. Yeah, so it would be all, all within that and then certain aspects of fusion with different methods that I've tried. So, you know, I've found that, okay, maybe me cooking it like this might be better and help bring out the flavor yeah. in a certain way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I hear that, man. Yeah. And yeah. That sounds like a lot of prep time, though. It is. And <laughs> like I was saying earlier, How, I, I love the pressure. <laughs> How much time? I love the pressure, dude. <laughs> and so it takes, it so take I, spend, for you I spend three days cooking for the table. So I'll start on Friday, continue through to Saturday, and then finish up on Sunday. And then, 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 people, the come. And then people come through. So yeah, yeah. And then in terms of like the, the research and the research like leading up to it and, yeah. and all that? Lots of reading, but I like to read. I took up reading two years ago. So, so yeah, reading and videos, you know, just taking in that content. Because if you're not... If you're not taking in knowledge and growing, you can't. Yeah, you, you can't, can't learn, dude. And you know, so so, so that's how it is. Ooh, that's yeah. that's quite that's yeah, quite yeah. interesting, yeah. man. And and so in, 
How long have you been um, running uh, the Black and White Food Company? I'd say we've been open for about two years, but in terms of the table, if we're talking the table, um, we started last year in yeah. March. Yeah, yeah. And how many have you done so far? Is quite a few. I don't even know how many at this point. <laughs> I don't even know. I don't want to know. I just want to keep going <laughs> and then just be like, all right, cool, you know. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough, yeah, but. Yeah. Um, like like Drake says, don't get hyped for the moment and then start to backpedal, you know what I I don't want to get hyped because I have a tendency to do that. So I just want to keep yeah, going, that's, you know, we win. It's a dangerous thing. It's, it's dangerous, a dangerous but thing, but a, but a real possibility. <laughs> 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 Getting caught up in, in the hype yeah, and, the, and, the, and the accolades. Yeah, but um, what I would love to ask you is, <clears throat> I assume that, um, and could be a wrong assumption, man, um, maybe a fairer question would just be, uh, what are the challenges that style of uh, that you face delivering that style of an experience to, to people? Because uh, I'll say this, uh, it's quite unique uh, when you invited me to one. Was that in December or November? I think yeah, it was yeah, November. It was November. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. I couldn't make it. But uh, even when I talked to you at that time, I was saying, man, this, this seems like so crazy. Yeah. I've never seen like yeah. anything like this, yeah. right? So what challenges do you face in delivering such like a, a unique experience in the context of Zim? Um, yeah, like ingredients for sure. Ingredients, equipment, and uh, I think also just getting people to really know what this food is. You know what I'm saying? Because some people will get certain dishes and some people won't. But it's just because of their exposure. You yeah. know, so I'd say those are, those are sort of my challenges. But even with that, I really do my best to make it more to more appealing to, to, to the regular man in that capacity. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, so it's not like a, it's not a, uh, you don't have to have a certain palate yeah, exactly. <laughs> to show up and exactly. actually like enjoy exactly. the experience. You, you, don't, you don't necessarily have to, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to make people be like, oh fuck, I don't fuck with this, but now I really fuck like with Like I, I had you it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so yeah, challenges, like I'm saying, just ingredients too, and, and yeah. equipment, honestly. I'd say that, that that for me is the, the biggest, the biggest issue that challenge. I face. But I try to work around it because there's always a way around it, you know. Yeah. That's the, also the fun part, I guess, again. <laughs> this, yeah, so, yeah, no. so, so by work around, let's say in the context of ingredients, is this like um, substitute ingredients that maybe you might feel like this is not uh, that, but it comes close to it? Is, yeah, is, exactly. Is that, that exactly the that. type of thing yeah. you're talking yeah. about? Yeah, yeah. 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 So we're just substituting that for that pretty much like you're saying or we are completely sort of recreating Reimagining. Something. Exactly, exactly, man. Yeah. Yeah, because I have yeah. to do that sometimes. I really do. And, um, you know, sometimes it goes well and sometimes it doesn't. It doesn't. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. we do catch outs, you know what I'm saying? We're not perfect. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. that... Yeah. Yeah. That is life in essence, man. Mm -hmm. uh, you're not going to strike out like every single time. Sure, uh, sure. Like... Sometimes you're gonna win big. Sometimes you're gonna lose big. Mm -hmm. It's part yeah. of the journey. It is. It is. I think. Yeah. It's part of what people who like to build things uh, come to terms with. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I came to terms with it a long time ago. I was like, okay, yeah, shit. Some of it's gonna tank. Some of it's just gonna tank, and you just gotta. Cause if you don't get back up again, what are you gonna do? You, you know? have to find a way to. You're gonna go back home and live with your queenie. You know, yeah. like I'm not gonna do that, bro. You know. So yeah. <laughs> I love that. I yeah. love that. Uh, but I, I want to ask you something that uh, might come across as a bit more philosophical, uh, but um, really fascinated because, and I, and I always say this to you, um, uh, fascinated because what you do is, is quite different and uh, different in a number of ways. Different in that uh, I'm sure there are people who have offered something like this, but uh, you have opened it up to people. Um, that's at least the impression I get is yeah. that uh, it is not an elitist cult type thing where you have to know someone who knows yeah. someone yeah. to like experience yeah. this thing, right? Yeah. Uh, I think even the way you reached out to me, we actually didn't know each other. And yeah, you're just yeah. like, yo, I, I love what you're doing there. Yeah. Uh, can you come through and experience what we're building yeah. here, right? Yeah. yeah. And so, what is your your North Star, at least, what is, what is it that you're trying to achieve with the Black and White Food Company and that experience that you're, you're giving to people? I think it's understanding of cultures, you know what I'm saying? With, with us as Zimbabwean people, we have our culture, but there's still so many different sects of it. 
and people don't necessarily respect all those different cultures yeah. because whenever we're out with people we're always in a space where there's more than those 30 people if we're going to eat if we're going to do this and do that so just trying to create that intimacy for people to come and chill and have a good time yeah. feel comfortable talking to this person even though i don't know him even though i may have five bucks in my pocket and he's got like a grand in his pocket i can yeah. talk to him and we can laugh and by the end of the time that we're leaving here we can hug each other and be homies we're cool. and be like exactly. we're cool because really that's that's who we are as people you know? Yeah, so I hear that. I feel man. like it's just super, super important, man, to just I hear that, bring man. people. Because even, even if you look at all of our youth, you know what I'm saying? Our youth, unfortunately, we don't have spaces where we can go and network with people who can help us get to the space that we need to get to. Yeah. It's also about like creating those opportunities for people. For me, it was that, that, that family, that networking, that just that whole, that whole sector. The synergy, the family, family, network, exactly, culture. Exactly, man. And just bringing that all together, I feel, is super important so that was yeah. my aim with it i didn't know where, where it was gonna go and i was hoping <laughs> that it would go somewhere great i was hoping yeah and yeah i think i think that we're on the path to doing that because yeah. we just want to bring people together like i'm saying because a lot of the people who even come are like yo dude like i've got like mad social anxiety especially people who come by themselves like i don't know if i'm going to be able to do this and i'm like nah bro you got this yeah. Yeah. As soon as people come, they just relax and they're laughing and they're smiling and all. Yeah. And I'll hear that other people. person laughing, I, I, you know. You're like, oh, I'm man, like, look at this guy. You know what I'm saying? And that's what it's about for me. And then when they eat the chicken or something, they'll be like, oh, my God, this chicken. And I'm like, yeah. you know, so that's that's what it's for for me, for the people, dude. Yeah. We're for yeah. the people, bro. Let's build shit. Let's build shit, dude.